This video is brought to you by Adorama. What's up you guys, it's Jordi here for Cinecam.net and welcome to Copycat Friday. Now, this is a series where we find a creative Jordi. way to recreate a certain... Jordi! Hey! Janik! Hey! What are you doing up there? I'm chilling. Come down! Come join me! Janik! No, You're wait, me. stay there, I'm coming to you. Okay, okay, okay. You have to Damn jump, it. you have to jump. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, yeah. Yep, yep. Hey, well done, Jordi, Whoa. well done. Wow! Ooh. How cool is this? Hey. Lorenzo! Lorenzo! Come on! Lorenzo, jump! Come. This is way too cool! Let's come! Derek, stay there! Come chill with us! Wow, this is oh. weird! So, like I was saying, this is a series where we find a simple way to recreate a certain effect or film technique. And today we are having a look at Ariana Grande and her new clip, No Tears Left to Cry. An amazing video with tons of visual effects and a fantasy team. They even have a behind-the-scenes video which I'll leave a link to in the description below. Now one of the effects is this Inception thing, and we found a pretty simple solution to recreate that if some conditions are met. Okay, we kind of have a little problem. As you can see, we have a green screen set up, but one thing is not working out so much, I guess. The wind is blowing way too much. We basically build a seal. But on, on the positive side, the green screen is super tight, no wrinkles. Now everything went pretty okay. You take one shot with the green screen and one empty shot. But then when you put those two shots together, we saw a pretty big lighting difference. And that was because of the weather was changing all the time. We had to bring it back into our studio. And by the way guys, I have a link in the description below that goes to a chroma key kit. Now I have some different things in there from portable screens to bigger clots and all. And they all link to Adorama who we've partnered up with because it's not just any other web shop. I was really surprised to not only find the big brands, but also the less popular ones. They care a lot about their customers with personal help on making any purchase choice. Now I have experienced that myself and that I find very valuable. If you'd like to check it out and drool a bit on the gear they all have, then make sure to click the first link in the description below. So we are trying to find the most simplest way to recreate this effect inside Premiere Pro and that unfortunately comes with some limitations. Definitely if you want to jump from one side over to the other. So that's why we're shooting this whole thing in our studio where we have a clean surface, a concrete surface and a clean black wall in the background. You can also do this for example on a beach where you have a clean sand surface, a clean sea and a clean uh, sky. Make sure there aren't too much clouds up there, also no boats in the background and it should also work. However, you can of course design your set a little bit, you know, we also have a motorcycle in the back, we've got a minion over there, some plants and a skateboard. Uh, you can definitely go for that, but make sure that it's not going to cover your green screen and that is the next thing. So let's have a look at what we're doing over there. So you want to take two shots, one empty shot of the space and the second one with the green screen. And that green screen sits right here and we're going to place that onto the scene and your subject who's going to jump from one side over to the other has to stand exactly within that cloth. Now we are aware that such a studio where you can control the lighting perfectly is not accessible to everyone so that's why we're going to take a look at a different technique which is going to be done outside. Like Jordi said earlier it's too hard to do outside because of the light changes when using a green screen but if you keep it simple you can do it anyways outside because you don't need the empty shot. You just use your shot, duplicate it, and then bend it. Simple as that. Before we'll do the easy way with throwing a stick, we're first going to see how to jump between the two worlds. In our studio, we first took a shot of the empty space, and you can already place this one in your timeline and make a duplication of it right away. Then rotate that duplication 90 degrees. Under opacity, click on the pen tool to draw a mask in an angle. Pay attention to the perspective that you're creating right here. Next up, you can reposition the wall that you've just created if that is needed. And to cover up the gap you still have on the left, duplicate that layer and remove the mask from it because we're going to create a new one. This can be a rectangle which you'd also need to feather a bunch. Then move that clip to the left to cover up the gap. Now there's one more thing that we have to do and that is the background. Now, because of our lighting in the studio, the mask is quite visible. So I'm creating a color mat. Pick the color from the wall in the back and place it on top of everything. Then draw a mask around it and feather it. Now, you don't always have to do this and we'll also show you guys when you don't later on. Then your second shot goes on top. Add the ultra key effect to it and remove all the green. 
For more guidance on how to set up and spool off the perfect dream key, you can click in the cards up there. With the pen tool, you then want to draw a rough mask around the subject, and if the edge of your green screen is visible, you might need to be more precise around the legs. Now, once you've got that in place, head over to the mask path properties and enable the animation. Now, you want to move forward in time and adjust your mask. If you didn't have to work too close in on the legs, you can skip multiple frames and adjust. But in this case, we need to adjust our mask frame by frame. Finally, right click on that clip and choose Nest. On that nest, we'll then apply the transform effect, and we're going to create a keyframe for the position and rotation just where I start to jump. Go a little further and rotate that clip 90 degree. And you might also need to reposition that clip as well. Important now is that you let the rotation start a little earlier than the position animation. Finally, de-check to use composition shutter angle and set one of your own to get a natural motion blur. We've also added some fake camera movement to it, which is a free preset pack that you can download from our website. Again, link in the description below. And then the outside shot goes exactly the same. You duplicate, rotate, draw your mask, and here the background does come out better because of the flatter lighting. Just make sure to play around with your mask so that any tree or bush comes out well. If you want some interaction between your two shots, you can easily do this with some editing tricks. Just make your subject throw something. First, let him throw in front of him. Then let them throw above him. In post-production then, you put your front row on the bottom and your above row on top. Do the same handlings that Jordi said and you get a seamless perfect effect. Make sure to subscribe and join the tribe to see us twice a week with more creative filmmaking tutorials. Thank you all so much for watching, thank you Adorama for the support today, and like always, stay creative. She's going crazy. She loves sand.